Hi everyone, it's Mary Hurdle here. I'm going to be promoting my newest book, Home Sweet Home. It has 17 paper pieced images and seven different projects to use them in, like this adorable lap quilt behind me. I'd like to show you a few little tips and tricks that I use every day as I paper piece so you can start making some adorable table runners like this Gnome for All Seasons that I just finished for this book and you'll find the patterns in the book. Here are a few things to think about and remember as you paper piece. They might seem very simple, but especially for a beginner, this could be helpful. This is the finished porcupine um, hedgehog. It's all two blocks finished and sewn together. Your pattern is on basically the front as you're working. And actually your finished block is created on the back of the pattern. And after you've cut out the pieces, as it describes in the book, you're going to have segments like this. You'll have an A segment, a B segment, a C, and so on. And each segment has numbered pieces in it, and you're going to follow those numbers. So right now I'm working on piece one. Tip one is, on piece one, your fabric doesn't need to be anything but pinned. You're not sewing piece one. Piece one is simply pinned. Some people use a little damp of glue, and you're putting the good side of the fabric away from the paper. So it's wrong side to wrong side, and you're just pinning it to the back behind piece one. And you just want a rather generous piece. Don't be fussy cutting anything at this point. Just get a nice, big, generous glob of fabric there. Now I'm ready to do piece two. And that is this little tiny triangle right there is two. So I am going to take any straight edge. I like to use a bookmark. I'm gonna find the line that is directly between piece one and two, line it up with that and bend it. And now there'll be a glob of fabric here. I will take my quarter, add a quarter ruler, line it, butt it up, because it has a nice little ridge, butt it up with the fold and trim off what you don't need because there was fabric here that I got rid of. Now I'm ready to start piece two. It's going to be in this brown fabric. I'm gonna put right side to right side. And here is the biggest helpfulest tip I can give you. When you're placing the fabric on for the next piece, it's always a guessing game because your piece is folded back. Okay, so where do you put it? Do you put it here? Do you put it here? You want to line it up so the edges of your seam allowance are even. So find a piece that has a nice straight edge on it. And as long as there is fabric behind this area where piece one or piece two is, once you flip your piece in place, they'll it'll be completely covered. If you're placing it here, and right now there is no fabric behind part of it, then when you flip your fabric after you sew it, you're gonna have trouble. It's not gonna fit. So as long as you have fabric behind it now, all the way around that piece, you'll have no trouble flipping it. And you can see I have a much more generous piece than I really need, because why not? You can trim it off and keep using that piece until it's all used up. So now I'm ready to put these two together and go to my machine, open this up, and you're gonna sew on that line which I have here marked with green. When you're sewing, you want to go a quarter inch beyond at the beginning and the end of the line. So this is really the seam I'm doing, but I'm adding a quarter inch to it on the beginning and the end. That way, the next seam I do here, they will overlap. You don't have to do any back tacking that way. I have it circled here. After I've sewn the line between one and two, I flipped my fabric into place. It was like this when I sewed it. I flip it into place, I press it, I trim off 
what I don't need. You don't have to be real exact at this point. You can just trim it off generously. And now when I go to the line for three, here's piece three, that other little triangle. I'm gonna have to fold this piece back, but you can see the seam here was coming in perpendicular to this next seam. So there are going to be stitches in the way holding it from bringing it back. So when I fold it back, I have to basically rip those two or three stitches out. So here you can see right there, it's been ripped back. So now I can lay on my ruler and trim this to a quarter inch and it's all nice and flat. And then I'll be ready to line up for piece number three. So you always have to rip a few stitches, but do it with the ruler there or your, your um, not your ruler, but your cardboard. So you get a nice straight fold as you're doing your ripping out. And the last tip I'm going to give you today is about trimming up the block or squaring it. For some reason, some people think you just are gonna cut on that dotted line that's a quarter inch away. Uh -uh. You have to actually use the squares or the markings on your cutting mat. Line up one side and square it if this is just a single block. And then use the lines to get the rest of it actually square to the mat. Now this is a, a rectangular block, so I'm putting these two together. The real tip is don't trim the whole block on both of them before you sew them together. Trim up the two sides that have the blue lines to quarter inch. Because now when you put them together and sew them, you really want this to line up perfectly because that's the bottom of his body. And so find those spots that really need to be lined up and then pin them together by just poking the pin through where it's crucial that they line up. And at this point, you should not have trimmed any of this other junk off because you might need it. You might have to adjust this ever so slightly an eighth of an inch this way or this way to get these things to all line up nicely. That's very normal. Then after you pin it and sew it, then you go back and trim off the whole thing to the measurement it says in the book. So don't be too quick to trim it all up until you're actually done sewing everything. And the same thing with your little segments. Don't trim up all the way around them as you're building your block. Just trim the sides to a quarter inch that you're working on because you may need to do some adjusting. And this extra stuff might look messy right now, but it's gonna help you get everything fit together. So just be patient. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to pick up Home Sweet Home the next time you're in a quilt shop. Bye.